we're back with a two-part episode. This week, episode one, we head off to the West Country, stopping at Stonehenge on the way, then heading off to Biddeford in North Devon and a park up at Heartland Point. So join us for more park ups, views, and much, much more. We pick this episode up as we hit up Lidl for a few bits, then hit the road and head on to Stonehenge. Weather's looking grim. Cheers, England. Getting to Stonehenge, the rain had stopped. There were a few vans here already and we picked our spot. And then we headed off for a walk There's a few walks and footpaths around Stonehenge, so we went exploring. Stonehenge in the van over there. Finding ourselves down at the visitor center, we found that they had toilets. Having a look around, we found these Neolithic houses. These are examples of dwellings from thousands of years ago. Then we headed back to the van, saw a beetle, Caught this military helicopter on camera, kept missing the Chinooks going right over where we just walked. We hop back in the van for what we can only explain as a bonanza of rainbows to unfold. Oh, and just like that, it started raining again. It was this guy's nap time. The rain got harder and harder. And then we got a rainbow. Woohoo! We even got a double rainbow. The camera doesn't even do it justice. We thought this afternoon would be a washout. Well, it was, but we got rewarded by the gods. It started raining again, with a little mini storm this time. Another rainbow. Then a cheeky little coffee. One last rainbow for good measure. Good morning, Frank. Morning. Too early. Too early. Morning, Frank. What's out there? Oh. <laughs> All of that. Oh no, oh, Kez. Yeah. We've just recorded <laughs> about five minutes worth of conversation and I've just realised I've recorded it all as time lapse. So for a laugh, uh, here's uh, the time lapse of us discussing brilliant. what we've been up to, oh. what we're doing on this trip, what we're doing this morning. Oh. <laughs> um, we, we are such novices Wow. This. I wondered when I looked at the timer, it was like, you've oh, only recorded like a minute. And I was like, brilliant. we've been talking for about five or 10 minutes. Oh, that's brilliant. Oh, so yeah. Summary, Stonehenge. So, yeah. <laughs> Gonna check out the stones. Leaving in a minute to go to Devon. Uh, gonna walk around the free bit. Last night, we've parked up at Stonehenge. It's on park for night. It's a road that runs all the way down the side of Stonehenge. It's about 15, 20 vans here at the moment. Um, parked here overnight, very, very, very windy, very rainy. But we did get some blue sky, which meant that we saw five rainbows. Yeah, that was, that was very cool. And then this morning, we're about to have a little walk down. So you can pay to go to Stonehenge. You park up at the visitor centre, which we walked to yesterday. Nice toilets there, by the way. Um, and so you get a bus down, you walk into the stones. You can't touch stones, you walk round them and then you leave. That's about 20 pounds per adult, I believe. Or you can just take two steps to the left and walk along the public path, which is free. So I think we're gonna take that option. Yep. <laughs> and then we're gonna come back to the van and then what we said on time-lapse are overnights. We've pre-planned, we never pre-plan. Well, you chose them, didn't you? 
and this, today we've got about a two and a half hour drive to Devon where we're going to hit up a cafe car park which is cafe's closed at the moment Trist you spoke to the lady who owns it didn't you yesterday? I did so I spoke to Vanessa who owns Heartland Point Cafe I think I'll put the name up um, she let me know that uh, we can park in her car park it's seven pounds for the night two pounds for the day uh, you pay the person on the toll road, which well, I guess we'll show you when we get there. There's a person sat on a gate. You'll see, it's quite a cool car park. We think it's at the top of some cliffs, a few walks to a lighthouse point. We saw someone say they could see seals and that there's a waterfall somewhere as well, which is pretty sweet. Um, if you're watching this and you're interested in staying there, the gates are closed from six o'clock in the evening then they open again at half nine in the morning so for security that's quite cool no one else coming up in the evening but if you do need to leave during the night or in the morning early it's probably not the most ideal place for you to stay um what do you don't, don't you think we just lost all of our energy yeah. we're doing the first <laughs> time around we're like go here do this go there and, and then we're trying like, to remember what um, we said what else did we say? park up seven pounds which we don't think is too bad it's like three pound fifty each um, bearing in mind that a lot of campsites are charging anywhere from like 20 to 45 pounds you said you saw a lovely park up uh, in a field and I think it was 45 pounds it was next to the beach looked beautiful and that but 45 pounds is quite a lot for one night where especially I just think it's extortionate isn't it and I'd much rather pay seven pounds to a small business her cafe's closed at the yeah. moment so due she's to not storm making... damage so she's not making any money. If it means that we can park up, pay some money, you're giving back to the local area. And I think that's, I think seven pounds is really reasonable. Yeah, really reasonable. 45 pounds for, I, don't, I mean, I don't know if that's two people, one, it's just, come on. It sounds like a lot, doesn't it? So yeah, we tend to like to, if we pay, don't we, we tend to find the little farm symbols on park for night. That tends to show you like farmland that's being opened up or, um, even sometimes they do come under campsite, the little tents. Yeah. Um, if they're like a mini, sort of a mini campsite but yeah we tend to if we pay we'll look for those because then you are you're giving back to the local area you know providing a bit of an income and and yeah and they're oh, a lot of time quite lovely spots yeah gorgeous spots perfect i can't wait for them on stay but um as we said in the time lapse we planned for once we planned every night of our trip um so sort of doing youtube's helped us to be a little bit more organized in where we're going uh, what did you mention earlier, which was um, it like this isn't this first world problems, but sometimes you know when you're on the road planning your next night on the road planning your next night, you can get a little tired driving and sort of being out and about walking blah blah blah. So it's nice to have something planned and we planned each of our nights so we kind of know where we're going where we're staying and what we're doing during the day which is lovely i wonder um, if that's just us though does anyone else just get in their van and plan the first night and have no idea where they're going because that's kind of what we've done for five years it is but i do think maybe that might just be unique to us does everyone else does everyone else do, do you like, plan yeah do you plan? do you wing it let us know in yeah. the comments i suppose maybe if you're more full time then you'll be winging it a lot more. Yeah, I don't know. Be interested know. to know what are you doing? How do you plan your trips or your van life from day to day? Let we've us decided... know in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> Comment below. Yeah, no, we've decided, didn't we, when we go to Scotland, we're going for two weeks to Scotland, but we've decided we're going to plan it in batches of three nights because then you can still stay present in the moment and enjoy what you're doing but without having to overthink where you're going to be going next. Exactly. I think that's going to be our our MO. Our yeah, motive. and try and not drive so much in between each park up. We have a tendency to want to explore and then we'll end up driving sort of three hours yeah. and in the winter when you're losing daylight that's not the most sensible way to do things. Yeah, we've had a few occasions haven't we where we're like oh this park up's nice and then it's not what we thought it was and then we're like oh the next one we like is an hour away so a bit more finite planning and also in the time lapse we spoke about <laughs> Um, in Devon and Cornwall it's not as easy to find well we find it's not as easy to find wild park ups as it is in Wales and Scotland um, they're awesome but it's a little more trickier in Cornwall and Devon so this time to sort of alleviate some stresses of where we're going we decided to plan our trips 
Uh, and then, as we say, first night was here at Stonehenge, next night at Heartland Point, Heartland Cafe, where it's seven pounds. Then we've got a couple of ideas for the next night. It might be another farmer's field, which I think is £10. And then, if all goes to plan, we're going to end up at Tintagel on another farmer's land, and I think that's £5 for the night. But that one's pretty cool because that's quite close to Tintagel Castle, and hopefully, we'll get to go to Merlin's Cave. Well, we've Caves. made a plan, haven't we? Well, yes, we have made a plan. We've made a plan that low t when it's low tide, you can go into Merlin's Cave. And so, we'll be there on the Saturday night, leaving Sunday. And low tide on the Saturday is five-ish. Yeah, five fifteen in the evening. But being Easter holidays, I think it's going to be rammed. So we've decided the low tide is six a.m. Sunday morning. So we're going to get up about five. <laughs> yeah. We're going to get up about five, and then we're going to get down to the cave, so we can actually go into Merlin's cave, and then it's about half six, seven sunrise. Something like that. Half so six, hopefully yeah. we'll be able to catch a sunrise from Tintagel Beach, which. Fingers crossed, should be pretty epic. So stay tuned. And also a cool way to end the vlog. <laughs> so yeah, next up we'll take you round Stonehenge. Although wow. it may just be pictures because it's so windy. Well, you get a bit of video, but it's gonna be no audio. <laughs> and then we jump back in the van and we'll head off to our next stop. Stonehenge is perhaps the world's most famous prehistoric monument. It was built in several stages. First monument was an early Henge monument, built about 5,000 years ago, and the unique stone circles were erected in the late Neolithic period about 2,500 years ago. This giant arrow on the floor shows you the midsummer sunrise and sunset. Stuck in traffic, haven't we? Yep. Yeah, hit the. I think it's the A3A3, yeah, A3A3. And when we look from home, it's going to take us 10 and a half hours to the next stop. Today it's taking three hours now. Fun. <laughs> Find a toilet en route. Yeah. Treat ourselves. <laughs> Treat ourselves to a toilet. Yeah, a little bit of porcelain. <laughs> Just living it up, haven't we? <laughs> living that good life. We had a lovely drive from Stonehenge to Devon. The sun poked its head out and we knew we were in for a good one. We parked up and this guy had another sleep. I think he gets tired from being awake. We cooked a stir fry and headed out for our cliff top walk with epic views. It didn't disappoint. From the park up, we are able to pick up part of the South West Coastal Path. The South West Coastal Path is England's longest waymarked long distance footpath and national trail. It stretches for a whopping 630 miles, running from Minehead in Somerset along the coasts of Devon and Cornwall to Paul Harbour in Dorset.
That's all we've got time for this week, folks. Join us next time when we wake up alone in our park up, we head off for our next epic park up, find out what happens when we got to Tintagel, our plans didn't go to plan. Hey, that's van life, baby. And don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and share this with someone you love. Until next time, folks, bye for now, and keep on adventuring.